Welcome, welcome. Tuesday night, tonight is our POM. It's our March, no, it's our April POM. I'm a month behind. I'm more than that, actually. So it's our, it's our April POM, and it's 922 Easy Shawl Collar Unlined Jacket. So the reason I chose this is because jackets are really in right now. Short jackets, long jackets, jackets, period, lightweight jackets, all kinds of jackets. They're just really popular. This is an easy jacket to make. It's fun. It's good. And so we thought we'd give you a little motivation to get going on it. All the POMs have been sent out for our POM club. So those went out on the 10th. As promised, they always go out on the 10th. Today's the, I don't know what today is, but it says today's the 16th. Um, so, uh, you know, probably international may not have them yet, but hopefully they'll be arriving in the next few days. So my goal is to show you five different ways to make this jacket. And I have 20 fabrics behind me because some of the, most of the fabric I actually used out of these new fabrics because it was really fun. This was really fun. I love that I have to sew. It's the best thing in the whole planet that I have to sew. I'm sorry, I have to take the afternoon off. I have to go sew. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get started. We might, it might feel a little discombobulated because I, we're doing a fabric sale, but I wanna do the fabric sale during the different ones that I've made because the fabrics are coming from here. So anyway, all right, so we're gonna get started. 922, Merida's Easy Unline, Shawl Collar, Easy Unline Jacket. So if you just think of all the parts, lining takes a little more time, so this doesn't have lining, but the whole front is self-faced. Um, it has a pocket in the side seam. We're gonna switch that around a little bit tonight. Shawl collars, shawl collars are easier to sew than notch lapels. Not easier, but just one less step. And so I put all the easy things into this jacket. It's a great jacket. I love it. Okay, so the first thing I did is I'm going to reach over and pull my little lady in. I made it without any changes. No changes. Side little pocket here. No changes to the length. The only thing I did was add trim. And guess what the trim is? The selvage. So this is fabric... Um, 36. So 3600 is our series tonight. 3600. So if you go to silhouettepatterns.com, fabrics, view all, be sure to click that view all. Go all the way down to the bottom. I think I screwed these up, you guys. They're backwards, but they're all down there. You'll just, or you can just put in the search bar 3620. And if you put in the number, it'll come up. And then you won't have to play with my disorganization. I think it was all dyslectic today because everything's backwards. But anyway, so this is the fabric and it's 100% cotton. And when I was seeing it, I, I love the selvage. So I thought, I'm just gonna put that little selvage in there. And it's so cute, it's so cute with jeans. It's really, you know, like just like I have it, jeans, I don't have jeans on, but jeans, a little white shirt and the little jacket and you're good to go. So I just trimmed off you know, obviously I had plenty left. Trimmed off the selvage, selvage put it in between the facing and the the facing and the, the front, and you're good to go. Okay. Okay. So I'm recommending you make it up just like it is, just so that you can get the hang of the pattern, get the feel for the the fit, all of those things. And I think it's good to just familiarize yourself with a pattern. The goal of the POM, in my opinion, is when you make up a pattern one time, you have, you know, it takes you a while to get the hang of the pattern, the way it goes together, all of that stuff. By the time you're making it up five times, <laughs> it's like you're just zipping through it. And I think that zipping through it stays with you for a long time. I don't think it's just for the moment. I think if forever stays with you and it comes really easy. We've got a good customer who comes in the store and this jacket was named for her. I mean, it was her jacket. It wasn't named, she didn't want it named after her, but it was her jacket. And, and she said, she just loved this jacket. Could you make us one? And the only thing we changed is we put it, there's a dart under the lapel. 
we put a dart under the lapel, but we did it. Anyway, she's made it up so many times, and she comes into the store, and every time she looks amazing, and she says, I love this jacket. So from her to all of you, I love this jacket. It's a great jacket. All right? Okay. So then what I decided to do is I wanted to make a vest. And the reason that became for me in my wardrobe is because I've got an outfit, and you all have seen the outfit we made a little bit ago. We're going to come over here. And it's a striped cream. It's an olive green and striped. And I have olive green pants. I've got a bunch of different things that I wear with it. I really love this shirt. But I wanted, um, I, I was going to wear it someplace the other day, but I really didn't feel like I was dressed up enough without a third piece over it. I didn't want a jacket because, you know, it had the long sleeves. I wanted a vest. I wanted a cream vest. <laughs> and I didn't have one. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make this a vest. And that's what I did. But because it had a shirt collar, I didn't feel like the shawl collar was appropriate. So I made it into a notched collar. So what I did is I took the new pattern, which is 724, by the way, this is the last night that you can order it, the, the new one. The, um, it's called Josie's Jacket. It's a safari jacket. And what I did is I superimposed the base of the neck and center front and copied the, that neckline onto this and got rid of the shawl collar. You can see it still has a dart there. That's okay because the collar will cover it. And then I took the collar from that pattern. So if you have a notch lapel, I use the Josie's jacket because, you know, we're there, it was right there. If you have a, a notch lapel, you put the base of the neck and then center front and you draw this, it's this shaping is what it is right here. It's this. So that it will cover the dart and then I use the collar. So it's really easy to do, it's fun to do, to, you know, to know how to do that kind of stuff is really fun. It's pattern making, and you all know there's a pattern making class coming, but, um, you know, it, it just, I just added the notch lapel, and I like it. I like the way that looks. I don't, I just don't feel like a shawl collar would have been appropriate, so that's why I changed it. Shawl collar is really, the fabric is okay, but the combination of the two together was not okay. So that's what gave me the reason to change. All right, now I have a photo of it, and as we go through the photos, we're going to do that a little bit later. I'll show you the photo. Um, not, a, not really a photo, but just kind of a page that gives you where, what to line up and, and where to line it up. Okay? Okay, so the only change is now the fabric on this is 3606, which is this right here. This is the fabric I used. And I liked it because you can see it matched my cream pants. This olive green, I don't have the fabric number. That's on the website. The, the green, olive green and cream stripe, this one right here, is on the website, but I, I forgot the number. But this one is, is here, and I love it. It's got a little bit of texture to it. It's 100% cotton. It's wonderful. It's very pretty. It worked great up, and it would have done a blouse. It would have done pants, lightweight. It could have done, it, it's really a good fabric, very versatile. All right. And like I said, it's got some texture to it that's very pretty. I don't, you know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's floral. I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it's very pretty. Okay. So then what we did was the third one that I did is I, the one I have on. So we're seeing a couple things. Well, first off, I was at dinner with a friend, and I saw a lady with a long coat on. I thought, hey, I don't have a long coat. I like that. That's really good looking. And just the way she had it on, it was just base, under, black underneath, and then just really cute. I just really like it. It's fingertip length. If you put your hand down to your side, it should be at your fingertips. Basically, that's the length that will be appropriate on you. I added eight inches to the pattern, but that because that's what worked for me at my height. You can add more, and then if you can take it away. Once you put it on, you know, you can always take take the hem away if you don't need it. All right, but the thing, the other thing I wanted to do to make it a little more current was jackets right now and jean jackets and all those kind of things where they're using coordinating fabrics. They're using more than one fabric, and it's a great look. It's really nice looking. So I used two fabrics. 
if you notice, the front of this is dots, and the sleeves in the back is circles. So we have circles and we have dots. Now these are both 100% viscose, and this would be 36, I think it's 3610 and 3611. One's called dots and one's called circles. 3610 is the circles and 3611 is the dots. Now you made it longer, so I used one yard of the dots and two yards of the circles to make it. And other than that, I didn't make any other changes. Although, I will say that for you all, when I made the first one, I made pockets. And when I made the vest, I made pockets. I was done making pockets. I don't use pockets. I don't even like pockets. <laughs> Shouldn't admit that, but you know, I just didn't want pockets in here. I, although, I did make another style that has pockets. I made a different kind of pockets, and I kind of really like those. But we'll get to that in here in just a minute. Um, but for mine, I just added length to the bottom, and I love it. I just really, really like it. One, I added two little buttons. One button here, one button here, two buttons here, you know, whatever you decide you like on that. There's so many decorative closures that would be incredible. No closures at all. I think you could do a lot of it. There's been many times, again, our customer who has the jacket, who really likes the jacket. We don't need to say her name. But anyway, a lot of times she comes in without a closure, and she says, oh, I haven't got the closure on yet. And I'm like, I didn't even notice. It just looks really good. You just don't necessarily notice that right away. But it's up to you. Okay, maybe off topic. Did Josie's jacket have a dart under the lapel or a bust dart? It has. A, it is off topic, but that's okay. It has a bust dart. The base is 600, so it has a bust dart in, in the original bust place. Um, would you use this pattern with a stripe? No, it's a shawl collar. That's why even with this, putting it with a stripe, I just felt like it was a clash of pattern and fabric. So that's why I moved the shawl collar into a notch. Okay. So a stripe, I don't think, would work with this fabric. That's just my wardrobe, my opinion. If it's your wardrobe and your opinion, you get to do whatever you want. What color is the fabric in the jacket you just, you made, just as the pattern is? It's a navy. If you go, that fabric is 3620. So if you go to 3620, it will say navy. Because one of you nicely asked me, to put up what the base color was. A lot of times I would just put up the fabric and not say that it's navy or blue or green or whatever, and I thought that was a great suggestion. So like this will say navy or blue so that you'll know what it is. Okay? Okay. Okay. Too much fun. All right. Then we got this fun one. I just love this. Okay. So we have this beautiful fabric, and this is fabric... The fabric on this is 3619, and we'll pull it out in a little bit, but it is amazing fabric. Um, it is a black knit. It, has, it was up before, but you all completely, totally missed it. And that happens sometimes when we've got, you know, 20 fabrics up. Just, you know, it's just, it's really easy to not hit them all, and I get that. But this fabric is to die for. It's 100% viscose. It's... Um, when I, when I got this fabric, when I bought this fabric, I thought, oh my gosh, that's like the fabric. I'm always wondering, where do I get that kind of fabric? So it's 100% viscose. It's got incredible drape. And this is an Alexander Wang. The tag is still on it. Sorry, I'm trying to read. 100% um, viscose. Um, I don't, I mean, that's really all it says. It, it's a black. It's a beautiful deep black, and but it does, it's current. It's like this season, 124 is the season it's in, which I found, always find interesting. But anyway, it's got great drape, and so what I saw was I'm gonna have to look. At, let's you look at some pictures here for just a second, and I want you to see kind of what I saw and why I decided to use it. Let's look at that first picture, and I may be out of order on these photos, you guys but we'll just figure it out. Okay, that's my long one, that's why. Once I saw the girl in the restaurant that had the long coat on, but the reason I put these pictures up is I want you to notice her hand and see where her hand hits that jacket. So be sure when you're making a long jacket that it's in proportion to your height, otherwise it can just annihilate you. It, it'll make you look like you're in your grandpa's jacket. 
Okay, next photo, I think I did another one. I want you to look at, this is scuba, but I want you to look at how expensive these are. They're very, very expensive, these longer little jackets. Doesn't matter if they're notch lapel or shawl, based on your fabric, they still, they both look great. Okay, let's look at this next picture. All right, this is, these are the placement points for putting a notch lapel onto a shawl collar. So there's two placement points that are shown on that diagram. One is the base of the neck and one is center front. So when you're taking a shawl collar and putting it, I mean a, a notch lapel and putting it onto a shawl collar, you need to align those two points and then you draw in and then use the collar from the notch lapel pattern. You need to check the back piece to make sure it's the same. In our case, because I was using the same pattern company, I wasn't even worried about that because we have that consistency in our patterns. But if you're using somebody else, you need to be careful of that, okay? So that's basically all I was saying is use the collar from the pattern, line up those two points, take away the shawl. The notch lapel will have a lapel that folds back over the dart. You don't want to mess with the dart. You still leave the dart where it is. Don't change the dart because that dart is, gonna, is what takes the jacket back in from the bust. It leans it back into the body. You don't want to do away with that bust. The bust the, that bust dart is a good thing. Okay, so let's look at the next picture. That's not the one I was going to. I told you we'd come and show you that in a minute. All right, so this is the one I was looking for. If you notice, this is like a little cardigan. And it's a shawl collar. It's a very thin shawl collar. But, I mean, I like the shawl collar. I didn't have any reason to take away the shawl collar. I really liked how it was. Um, but I did like the pocket. And so if you notice, that pocket is kind of just appears out of nowhere. And we used to have this on an Eileen Fisher blouse. If you have the blouse, you can go look at it. It's pattern number 100. Um, but if not, I'm going to show you how to do it in this pattern. So if we look to the next picture, just for a second there, you can just gives you a better uh, focus as to where it is. And you can see there's a seam that's coming across. And there's only one way to do this. So if we look at the next drawing, what I'm going to do is I've drawn it and I've shown you how to do it. Okay. Now, because these pockets are, the only piece you're going to change is center front. Not the front facing, just the front. Um, because these pieces are, um, you know, you want to be careful. I, I'm not making the pattern, I'm just telling you how to do it. But you want to do it probably oh, eight inches down from the underarm because you don't want the pockets so high that they're under your bust and you're putting your hands into your bust when you go to do it. So you're going to add 10 inches. That's because the depth of the pocket is 5 inches and you're going to add double the amount. And so when you do it, if this were my 10 inches, you know, all you're going to do is you're going to fold it back up. And when you fold it, you're going to stitch, 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 and then you're going to fold this back down. Now when you stitch to this point here, you turn a right angle and go down to the fold. Come up here, you know, the width of your pocket. You want it to be about five and a half inches wide. Come up and do a rectangle. So you're going to do like an upside down L and an upside down L. That opening right there is going to be where the pocket is. Okay, and then you can see that by the time you have stitched across here, you're going to fold that down. And that's going to be the only area right here that's unstitched. Okay, so you're going to fold it up, stitch L, up L, backwards L, fold down, and then just proceed as normal. The pocket's already made. Very easy to do. Play with it. Do it on a little, you can do it on a little scrap piece of paper. Add the 10 inches, fold up, and then come around. And it's just, with this black knit, and it's just being such a beautiful knit, I just decided this was just a really pretty fabric pattern combination. When I saw that look, I thought this is the fabric I want to use. And then I also used my sweater knit sleeve. I did not use my, the two-piece sleeve. There's no reason to in a knit in my mind. So um, I used fabric 3619. And then the only thing I changed was that front, and I added length to it. And then I added, um, I added, I added three inches to the jacket total. I wanted it to be a little longer. Um, so the back I added three inches, so the front I actually added 13 inches, but just 10 inches for the pocket. And for the front facing, I added three inches.
Okay, we'll go over questions so you make sure you understand it. What is the base for this jacket? 600. It's a blouse sleeve. It's in the blouse section. Because it's below 1,000, it's in that blouse family. Can you use the black fabric to make pants or jumpsuit? Yeah, you can. It's beautiful. It's beautiful fabric. 100% viscose. It's a knit. It's just incredible. Did you use a knit sleeve with the black version? I did. This is my 195 sleeve, and I drew on my knit armhole with my template or, or whatever. Just draw on your template and then put that in. Remember that when you're doing this, because the facing of this jacket comes all the way to the side seam, you'll have two layers here in the front of all of these jackets. I've got two layers in the front, one layer in the back. That doesn't change anything, just be sure to catch both layers. What is the number of the black Alexander Wang fabric knit? 3619, that's this right here, 3619, okay? And you can see when I pull it out, and you know, whenever I'm using these fabrics and we're having a fabric sale, I'm always not sure when to, or what order to show this to you in, when I'm showing you the jackets or when I'm showing you the fabric. But anyway, that's the fabric. It's just a beautiful, I mean, the drape is just incredible. It's just really, really pretty. Okay, it's a nice knit, 100% viscose. Okay, so we got those questions answered. Okay, so now, so far we've made it as it is. We've turned it into a, a vest with a notch lapel. I've added length onto mine. Make sure, like I said, it's at your fingertips. We've turned it into a knit and we've added a front little pocket here, which I love. And, um, and then we've put a, um, a sweater sleeve with it, or a, a knit sleeve, I should say, with it. And then also what I did is I made it out of a sheer. So I'm gonna just move this little girl up here so we can see this. And this is really fun because, again, when we go shopping, and I had, a, I had a fun little shopping experience last Friday with one of you, which was really super fun. Um, you know, you just see everything that's out there, and there's a lot of shears. There's a, literally, there's a lot of jackets, but they're all different fabrics. There's so many different fabrics that it's really fun to play with. So this particular fabric that I wanted to make it out of, I wanted a pop of color, and I wanted a really light um, shear. And so the fabric for this that I used is um, 71.94. 70, I'll go over the fabrics again and the jackets and then we'll do the fabric sale. I think that will keep it. What number is the black Alexander Wang fabric net? That's 36.19. If you just put in your search bar 36.19, it will come up. How much fabric for the black with pockets? Um, get, just get whatever your size needs. I would just get one extra yard just to make sure you have enough. That, that front piece is very long before you fold it up and fold it back down. Is your pattern making class the same as your basic pattern making DVD? It is, it's just live and um, it just kind of makes sure, we have a class that we release every week for two months. So I think it just has a tendency to keep you on track and give you homework. I think it pushes you a little bit. Um, but you know, if it's not for you, by all means, just, I, I've said it for 20 years, 30 years, whatever, I keep saying it, learn pattern making. You just, you're all making your job so much harder. You know, there's a question that's come in tonight and I'm gonna answer the question, but you're making your life so much harder by not knowing it. And once you know them, you know them. And it's not that hard. I'm, and, you know, I've said this many times in colleges. I took the class, I'm like, is this it? I'm supposed to know how to make patterns now? Yeah, you do, you just have to apply it. So it's the pushing you and that application that I think is really important. Okay, so I wanna show a picture now of a garment that is a sh these shears that we're talking about, these sheer jackets. I want you to look at the price of this jacket. Um, this is a sheer garment and it is not inexpensive. Now, keep in mind that when a garment is sheer, you know, you have to be a little careful, but you know, this was just a really easy sew and it was just a lot of fun. So what I did, if you look at the next picture, sorry, Ben, can't see the price? Oh, even when you make it big, you can't? It's like $4,000, it's ridiculous, it's very expensive. It's Acris, but still $4,000, jeez. Okay, I wanna look at these pieces, these are the sheer pieces. Now, so what I did is I didn't use, um, now I made a little scarf to go with it, just because I was having too much fun. 
I didn't use a facing. There's just the front, the sleeve, and the back. And on this diagram, I just gave you some tips so that you would, um, you know, just, just think. I, I did, did it so you wouldn't have to think it through, but if you think it through, you'd come up with these tips. I'm just doing the thinking for you, okay? So for an example, instead of, you don't have a facing. So, and the lapel is gonna fold back. So you're gonna do the dart on the right side. Rather than doing it on the underside, you're gonna do it on the right side of the fabric, and then the lapel is going to go over it. Okay, just FYI. At center back, you know, when you have a shawl collar and you have a center back, you're gonna do that seam, again, on the right side so that when the collar folds over, it completely covers it. So if we go back here, what I'm saying to you is, again, it's on the inside so that when it flips over, it covers it. The next thing I'm gonna tell you to do, to keep a shear, which doesn't have a lot of body, it has a lot of drape more than anything, you're gonna stitch the shawl collar down just about two inches this way and two inches this way. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep that in a shawl collar so that as it comes around to the front, it will stay a shawl collar. Because otherwise, it, it doesn't have a lot of life, I mean, you know, it has too much life to it, and it will have a tendency to just go wherever it wants. But if you stitch that down in the back, it'll hold itself a little bit better in the front. So just stitch it down, you know, you're just stitching, what I did is I'm just stitching literally right into the seam. Okay, on the sleeves, I just made them the right length, same length, and then I just rolled them up. On the front, instead of making it a, a square in the front, I just curved it and I did a rolled edge all the way around. And then just to be pretty, I just added a scarf. I just took my extra fabric and I just made a little scarf that I figured I could wear with it. And I just thought that was just really, really pretty. And you can see it adds to the softness and the volume of the front because you're seeing a lot. When I was in Italy, um, we went to one factory and the big her, her biggest strength and I bought these fabrics and they're coming they just have to make them for a month and they have to ship them for a month so we'll get them but they are coordinating chiffons and solid silks they're beautiful I mean I can't wait to get them I can't wait to share them with you they're not going to be cheap but I'm really excited about getting them um, but the whole concept is to do like a blouse underneath that's solid and then the chiffon is on top. But I mean, I love this. I love it paired with jeans. I love that whole feminine thing just paired with, you know, everyday stuff. So it works really well. Again, the fabric in this one is $71.94. Okay, the fabric in this one, this is a black. It's um, $36.19. The fabric in the blue is 30, that's a navy, it's $36.20. And that's the selvage that I used in the shawl collar. The one I have on, there's two fabrics I have on. There's dots and circles. The dots are the front, circles is the back, sleeves in the back. And that's 36.10 and 36.11. Okay, and then over here, we're gonna show you that cream that I did the vest with. And the cream is 36.05, okay? And those are all the fabrics that I used for the jacket. What I did though is I made up, the reason I did the fabric sale is because I just wanted to go through and show you there's so many beautiful fabrics that would work well with this jacket. It's very versatile. As you can see, obviously we went from a knit to a sheer to, you know, a woven. But um, I want to start showing you. Let's take a minute. We'll answer questions and then I want to start showing you just kind of some of these fabrics that I think will work really well for you. Um, and then also I've got one more question that was sent to me that I want to answer tonight. Usually it's in the Q&As, but because this pertained to this particular jacket, I want to try to address it. Cannot see the back seam on the orange sheer. Cannot see back seam on orange sheer. Confirming so back wrong sides together? No, no, no. This is right sides together. This, the sheer, I didn't do the sheer any different. In fact, I was thinking about this, and we probably should come in close on that, because I think a lot of you think that with a sheer, you have to do French seams, or you have to do, I don't know, a lot of hard work in sewing. Just sew it. That's right sides together. That's it. That's the inside that you're seeing. 
and all I did was serge it. And a French seam and a serge seam looks identical to me from the, uh, from the outside. And when you open it up, you can see it's a French seam or a serge seam. But that's a serge seam, and uh, the sleeves are done the same way. You know, that's just a serge seam on the outside. You only have a couple seams. You know, this is a pretty easy jacket, but okay. So how did I finish the seam? I serged the whole thing except for the edges and all the way around I did a rolled edge and then on the serger and then on the scarf I did a rolled edge also. Okay, and, and I used red. It was close enough that I liked the way it looked. Okay, so there's one other picture that I want to show. I think it's our last picture. Um, and this is Oh, this is the picture. Yeah, this is what I want. Okay, sorry, you guys. I drew this a couple days ago, and then I forget it all. <laughs> all right. Um, so I had a question that she got her 922. She got her pattern in the mail. And so but what she's worried about is the sleeve. She wears one size in the body, and the sleeve that she needs to wear is bigger than the size that her body is. Okay? Cancer. It doesn't even matter why. It just is. So she wants to use, we're going to say, for an example, a size 4 sleeve in a size 3 garment. However, she doesn't want to use a 4. You know, typically I say to you guys, we'll just take the 4 sleeve and the 4 armhole and draw the 4 armhole onto the 3. She doesn't want to do that. She doesn't want to make the armhole larger. She wants the armhole smaller. So that's pattern making. And so here we are crossing the line into pattern making again. And that's where I, you know, it, it just... I can't do it. So I'm going to tell you that what you can do is this picture, you can shorten the cap height. Look at that as an option. You can go in, you can shorten the cap height, and the cap height will somewhat do that job. But man, she spelled out a whole bunch of options on here. They are all bad options. So on the one hand, I hate not to help you, and on the other hand, I just, you know, can't can't do that. Can't teach pattern making and, and fitting all at the same time. So anyway, look at the cap height. You can, you can lower the cap height and keep that armhole the same size without changing the circumference. Okay? The numbers I can't give you because I don't know. You know da, da, da. Okay, we said enough. The black fabric jacket is ribbed. Um, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to just let you see kind of a little close-up of it. It definitely, I wouldn't call it ribbed, but it's ribbed. I know that sounds crazy. It, it's, it's linear, but ribbing implies that it's kind of up and down and up and down, and it's not. It is linear, but it's not ribbed. I think that's a terrible explanation, but anyway, it does have stretch, uh, one direction. So hopefully you can see that. It's beautiful fabric, though. I think the collar is confusing on the sheer. OK? You sew the collar on the outside. Oh, I get it. You only sew the lapel collar. Yeah, you got it. OK. You know, in a lot of this, you guys, I was sitting here thinking as I was sewing, you'll understand it as you sew it. I just thought I'd give you a heads up. You probably don't even need my heads up. You'd figure it out. It's just that if you, the problem is, is like if you go to do this dart and you do it on the inside like you typically do when you're making the jacket, you don't have a facing and when the collar goes back, the dart will show. So if you do it on the right side, when you fold it back, it doesn't show. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you that tip. <laughs> you probably don't need that tip. Can you show the orange aid scarf again? It's such a gorgeous combination. Thanks, yeah. It's just, uh, this was just my scraps, you guys. So this, I don't even know the length of it. It just took the length, the width of the fabric and tore it. This fabric tears really nicely. And then I always like when the, when the edge of the scarf is angled, so I angled it both sides and then finished it. And it's probably, I don't know, 10 inches wide, probably 10 inches wide. But again, I just wanted a little bit of um, something for the neck edge, just to complement the flow that was down here. So that was just kind of how that was born. Okay. 
All right, so I think if, let's again catch up on questions and then we'll just go through the fabrics because we've got some really fun fabrics here. All right, we're going to start with 3600. 3600, 3601 through 3620 are the 20 fabrics that we have tonight. And again, my thinking was to gear them toward this particular jacket. And then, you know, some type, they were um, items that went together with the particular jacket. So this first one, well, the second one is 3602. And 3602 is, um, is a linen. It's 100% linen. And I did this because this would be fabulous in this jacket, a linen jacket. It'd be perfect. There's a couple linens. We've got a palm tree on the site, but the linens are just beautiful. This in particular is a stretch linen, so it would be nice to, you know, put that stretch going around you and you'd have a little bit of give, especially in the sleeves. So I thought in particular that made a really nice um, fabric. And then it bore with it this fabric, which is a viscose woven, and I did that because they're such a nice pairing. 36, so 3602 is the linen, and 3601 is the pairing that I did with it. I can pull that down and get it for you. Now that's a viscose and it's a viscose woven. But it's got great drape. This is what I made the pants out of. I love these pants. And I wear these pants just with like a cream t-shirt. But they're really fun. They're really nice. Cool, comfortable, wonderful. 100% viscose. Okay, and it really pairs well even if you were to do just a blouse or something like that. I didn't do a jacket. I didn't do a jacket in a really lightweight wove and I thought about it. I did the sheer, but I really didn't do it in a lightweight. Everything that I used was kind of jacket fabric, but it, certainly it could be. 3603, I put this in because we've had quite a bit requests for khaki and the, the requests we've had, we've sold. And this was the last piece of khaki that I had. And this khaki, this khaki's super nice. It's 100% cotton, and it's really pretty. It's, it's perfect for the jacket. It does have a nice selvage if you decide to use, you know, that you want to insert that in. It's got a little bit of texture to it. It'd be good as pants. It, it really would be good as anything. It's got, it's a stretch woven. It has stretch in one direction. It's good, 100% cotton, nice stuff, okay? Okay, that's 3603. Now I put in 3604 because down here we're gonna come into another 100% linen and this pairs so well with it. There's only a couple, couple yards on here. It's 100% viscose, it's a beautiful piece, it's a border. There's only one border though, it's at the bottom and like I said, there's only a couple, of, this is just such a great piece. Um, but it pairs so well with this linen down below, this lime linen. I think this lime linen would be a great jacket. So this is the, well actually there's only one border on one end. I'm actually gonna put it on this edge so you can see the border. That's upside down though. It's a little bit directional. I think it looks better the other way. I just wanted to show you the border. There's only one border. So that's just such a great border. You can see it matches the orange here. It matches the lime green. It really just goes with a lot of different colors. And it's pretty. But again, there's just not a lot of yardage there. OK, we're going to put that back. And I'm going to jump and just show you this, because this is what it goes with. And it's really good looking. This is 100% linen. And again, you can see where this would just be a really pretty jacket. Pair it with a white, pair it with a navy. Um, it'd just be really pretty. It's a woven fabric. But you can see linen, linen, especially the solids, linen usually has so much wrinkling and it just doesn't. I'm just surprised how it just really wears well. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so I'm gonna put that back and then I think all of us know, or most of us know, that Mr. Cavalli, Roberta Cavalli, passed away. 
So we, I put up the, this Cavalli. I think I, I don't have much Cavalli left. This is almost the rest of it. But this was his graffiti collection. Um, this is 100% cotton, just Cavalli. He was 83 years old. He died last week. So you can say I, I had this fabric and I got it when, and it's going to be a whole lot more expensive. You know, once they pass away, they don't mark the fabric down. That's for sure. It goes up the other way. So that's 100% cotton. It would be great. I think this would be a great jacket. It would do really well for a jacket. You don't need a heavy fabric at all. And then um, this next one, do you have... Did you have the linen before 3602? Yes, this, this, we put this back up. I don't know the number that it was, but yes, this was back up. Um, this one is the cream on my vest. It's 3606, one, two, three, four, five, 3606, like a textured, I, I, for the life of me, I don't know what is in that texture. I mean, like I've literally put a magnifying glass on, I can't tell what it is, just a cool texture. But it's great. It's 100% cotton. It sews great, I can tell you that. Oh, you want me to hold it still for a second? I'm confused about 3619. Description from the website, 3619. Italian black, fine ribbed, 100% cotton, one-way knit. Okay, so if I just left the, because there is a ribbing to it. The ribbing, it's not, ribbing is like a high point and a low point, a high point and a low point. Typically, it's ribbed, it's linear, because I don't want to tell you it's not, but it's so fine that you would look at it and say, this is not ribbed. It's not what you would typically think of as ribbing, because it's just so fine. It's a very fine black ribbed knit. <laughs> I hope that helps, OK? <laughs> OK, fabric 3620 is a medium weight fabric. Yeah, I'll, I can get it out for you here in just a second. Who says we have to go in order? We can go any order you all want to go in, okay? This is 3620. Now, this fabric is very cool. I mean, I really, when I was making the jacket, I thought, okay, I could use both sides because, again, this trend is really showing that, there's, that they're making jackets and stuff with two different fabrics and they're coordinating or they're contrasting or there's some really cool stuff out there. So I thought this would really work because the wrong side or maybe it's the right side, I don't know which, but it's, it's really pretty. I mean, it's both are really nice. But anyway, it is a navy base. It's a blue, a little gray in there. But it's very pretty. And you can see where I mixed it in with the white. I just really like that with a pair of jeans into the white. OK, hopefully that helped. But that is about a four ounce. I put a four ounce on, well, three ounce. I can't remember what I put on there. It's light. It's, it's, um, it's perfect for a jacket. I don't know how else to say that because it's very lightweight, but it's got body to it. Same with the one I've got on. They're really lightweight. They've just got great body to them. What pattern is the purple pants? Those are the cargo pants, 3623, the pull-on cargo pants, except I just put all the pieces together rather than having them all cut up. Okay? All right, so we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3607. I thought this would be just a really cute jacket, a little black and white jacket. Doesn't have to be heavy. It's 100% cotton. It's completely adorable. No, it's 100% viscose. Sorry. Look at that. This is so popular right now, you guys. All of these little polka dots. I mean, these are triangular polka dots, but still, same thing. Great, great drape on this fabric. You guys know these viscose, you've bought them, you have them. These viscose are incredible. They're beautiful fabrics. The drape is really, really nice. Okay, and this, this, is a, this is really interesting because I thought this would make a really pretty jacket also. This is a Glen plaid, very, very traditional. Um, now what I was going to do, though, instead of, because it's a shawl collar, instead of doing, and you wouldn't have to really match anything except the front to the back, do like a solid black facing so that the black would be the facing. You'd have the plaid. This is a wool viscose blend. It's a beautiful fabric. It's a really pretty piece. Um, it's a woven. But you could do a black facing. You could do black knit sleeves. I just see a really cute little jacket like this. So it'd be, it'd be dressy and casual kind of all at the same time. 
but it, it's really perfect weight. You could do a pair of pants that coordinated with it. It's a wool viscose blend. Very pretty, very nice. All right, and then this black textured is also gorgeous. Just, you know, for just a simple little jacket, using a fabric like this would be absolutely lovely. Look at the print on that, it's beautiful. The texture on this is just stunning. So this is 3609. This is a jacquard, but it's lightweight. I mean, it is very, very, it's gotta be real expensive. You know, we buy these fabrics all secondhand and they're way, way less than what they were originally. But I can promise you that is not a cheap piece of fabric. It's very pretty and it's, let's see, what is it? It's a, um, it's a cotton poly. It's a stretch woven. So again, it would, you know, when you put the going around, it would really give you a little bit of movement on a sleeve or a jacket. But again, don't think jackets are just for work. Jackets are everywhere, you guys. Okay, then we have 3610 and 3611. That's what I've got on. So 3610 is the circles and 3611 is the dots. They're both 100% viscose. They're, you know, like, um, they're lightweight. I think it's a perfect spring jacket, summer jacket, personally. They're really light, but they have good drape, but they're not real soft. Is that the best way to describe that? You could wash them in Coca-Cola. I didn't. I didn't. I haven't washed this since I made it. I made it and I wore it, but I haven't washed it. So that's 3610 and 3611, okay? Okay. What pattern is the purple pant? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so we're on 3600s. You go to silhouettepatterns.com, fabrics, view all. And that's where you'll see them all. And they're all at the bottom. They're just not in crazy order. I think, anyway, it doesn't matter. You'll, f you'll figure it out. Or in the search bar, just put the number you're looking for and then you can find it that way. Okay, okay there's some cool fabrics down here I wanna show you that are really fun. And again, the goal was to, I'm so confused. <laughs> that seems to be a current theme running tonight. I must not be getting it, it well tonight. Your jacket is the pattern ending today and the shawl collar is April POM. Eh, wrong on two accounts. The jacket is the POM. This is the POM. The POM is, uh, maybe you've had one too many glasses of wine. Okay, put the wine down. <laughs> the POM is 922, that's what I'm wearing. All I did was lengthen this. That's it. I lengthened it eight inches. The, the sale ending today is called Josie's jacket, the number is 724, and you can go and look, we sent out an email. Whatever the sales are in tonight, we're done. We're printing, like next week. And we, you know, we have to do that. I've had people come back and said, can I have this pattern? No, we, we don't have enough, we only print the exact amount. And it really saves us, you guys. It helps, it allows us to do this. So that's why we are so strict on it. Okay, so on the bottom of the cargo pants, you don't have to put on a cuff. It's not a cuff, it's just a turned up, gathered elastic. It's like, um, it's like on, a, on a blouse. When you gather the bottom, you just hem it and run elastic through it. That's what it is on the pull-on cargo pant. So we didn't not sew on a piece, we just didn't put the elastic through the bottom, okay? Hopefully that makes sense and you're less confused. I can see you all sitting there. I'm so confused. All right, does that clarify? If you're confused, just ask and we'll fix it. All right, the goal tonight is to make you understand more, not less. Okay. So let's go after that goal. Okay, so we're on 3612. 3612, this is, um, love this fabric. It is a stretch, it's a knit, it's a cream. It would be great for so many. It's like a four, this is, um, kite the line kite they do a very good weight um, product and so this has stretch in both directions 
it's, um, you know, I'm going to put my hand behind it because you can see that you can't see anything through it. It's really dense, um, but it's a light color. And I'm always attracted to stuff like that because there's so much you can do with it. You're not limited by it being sheer. You could do leggings. You could do just so many things. So that's 3612. It's two-way, and it's a cotton poly. Okay? All right, then this next one. Okay, you guys are going to love this. I, <laughs> this is Alexander Wang. And you know, Alexander Wang has some very cool stuff. This is, and I've never seen this before, which is probably why I bought it. It's a black and white reversible scuba. It's black, black, and it's arctic white, and it is a reversible. It is so cool. <laughs> so get your fashion sense in order because it's beautiful, and both sides are just stunningly. Like the arctic white is a white white. The black is just really, really black. It has stretch in one direction, but it is, it's black. And it's kind of like when you can see the selvage, it's kind of like laminated. It's cotton poly. It's laminated onto the white. So basically the white is fabric and the black is laminated on. So it's not dyed. It won't. That's good news because you can wash it. One color won't bleed to another. It's just really high end. It's so good looking. A bomber jacket, tonight's jacket, all these things would be just, I think, incredible. Okay, so that's 3613. 3614 I showed you was the lime. This is an Alexander Wang also. It's a cotton poly, which surprises me just because it feels like 100% cotton. I mean, that's why I insist on burning everything because it's, this is a sweatshirt fabric. It's a terry, it's a French terry. And it has stretch in one direction and it, well, kind of both directions, but not much stretch. But it's a sweatshirt fabric, and it's really beautiful. The quality is gorgeous. So I just assumed it was 100% cotton, but it's not. It's, a co it's got a little bit of poly in it. But it's great color, and it probably is, you know, I mean, if you're going to do a sweatshirt, it's probably not the right time right now. But we got it in. I thought, you know what, I'm going to put this in. It's really good looking stuff. OK, so that's our black terry. All right, and then we've got two reversibles, and they're both very, very pretty. They're both cotton poly. They're both damask. And so I want you to think about, uh, or jacquards. I'm sorry, not damask, jacquards. I want you to think about, you know, a little dinner jacket that's dressy, because this pattern tonight, the 922, would be perfect in something like that. And anytime you have a fabric like this, I'm never sure which is the right side. You can probably debate it all day long, but they're both really beautiful. I think it's this side. Very pretty. It's a gray, a black, and a white. Not really a white. Gray, black, and charcoal. That's what it is. It's gray, black, and charcoal. Okay, and then we've got the, a similar thing, but in a red and a black. And I think this is just really beautiful also. Again, reversible, same type. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful. And just think of it in a little shawl collar jacket. It's perfect for a little shawl collar. Even like the one I have on, like just a longer one with just a black underneath, I think would be so stunning. And just really, really pretty. Okay. All right, and then we have this blue, and this blue is 36, um, 3618. It's a cotton and silk. This would be an incredible jacket. Sorry, I got to pull the bottom of this out to get it out of the top. Ah, sorry about that. This is a cotton silk. It has great drape, and this would be great in this jacket. I think it'd even be nice to make a pair of pants to go with the jacket. I just wish you could feel the drape in this. It's, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's almost like got a suede effect to it. It's very, very pretty. It's a twill. And it's a light blue and a darker blue thread. And I think that's what creates that kind of um, 
suede look to it. It's very pretty. It's a woven. There's no stretch to it. Just very, just unique, really pretty. And that is Alexander Wang also, cotton silk. Okay, then 3619 is the black, which is this jacket right here, the black finely ribbed. <laughs> That's not ribbed, but it's very, very fine. I just don't want you to think you can use it for ribbing. It's I mean, I guess you could, but it's probably not what you're thinking. And then the 3620, which is the blue that I showed a little bit earlier. Okay, now we'll go back in and just see if you guys have any questions or if you want to see any other fabrics or clarifications. We covered a lot tonight, didn't we? <laughs> I just wanted you to get lots of use out of the pattern rather than just, you know, make one jacket. That's not the goal. The goal is to just keep making jackets. Just crank them out, man. It's a lot of fun. You guys have made several comments about how good our camera man is. He's good, huh? He's patient. He's very good. So we appreciate it very much. Because without a camera, we would be toast. Are any of the jackets tonight fused? No, no, no. Okay, so we're going to look a little closer at the red jacket. I think it's orange, but that's okay. Would the 3612 make a good jacket? 3612, as long as you're okay with a knit. You mean this one's a knit? Just know that it's a knit. It would make a great jacket, which is why I put it in. It's got great drape, it's not light. I mean, it's, it's not heavy, but yes, it would make a great jacket. Okay, what do you, tell me what you want to see about this. It's pretty. It's very pretty, very different, huh? See, that's your jacket pattern. Easy, easy peasy. All right, you guys. So 922 is what we've been talking about tonight. 922, it has two little inseam pockets. So I don't have to put elastic in the cargoes. What are you doing the top? I mean, it's an elastic pull-on pant. It's not named elastic for the hem. It's named elastic for the pull-on at the top. And you would have to put elastic in the top, yes. So I hate to say yes to that when <laughs> we're talking top or bottom, which one? <laughs> All right. Just got to check you guys. Make sure I'm on the right page. <laughs> All right, anything else, you guys? We having fun yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah? See, now you know why I love to sew. Look at all these fun new things I've got. I am a lucky, lucky girl. Is the kite cream a true cream? It's a true cream, it's not a milk. I would call this a milk. I would call this a milk because it's, let me, let me bring it up here so you can see and compare it because I'll show you kind of my thinking. This is a cream, this is a khaki, this is a milk. Can you see the differences in the color? That's a cream, that's not a milk. That's a khaki, that's a cream. Just FYI so you can see that, so you can compare on camera the different colors. It's a knit or a woven, it's a knit. Did you use the lighter weight thread in the rolled edge on the orange jacket? You guys know me well. I don't change threads. Uh, you know, one thread everywhere, all the time. No changing of threads. I used a three thread serger. Same thread I did the four thread with. I just took one thread away. I sewed the whole jacket, took a thread away, finished the edges, and did the scarf. Quick and easy, it really was. Very quick and easy. Is the hem of the cargoes can hang, the hem of the cargoes can hang for you? I think this is the same person that's just getting, yes. Yes, it can. Yes. Did you use a two thread rolled edge on the orange jacket? No, three thread. 
I, I don't ever use a two thread. I don't know why, I just don't. I always use a three thread. Two bottom and one upper looper. Two bottom and one upper. And I just love the weight. I love a heavy edging onto a really lightweight scarf. I just love that. I don't know what it is about it. It somehow looks rich to me, I think. But anyway, I just really like that combination. All right, we got it. We're ready, we're good. We're ready to sew. Okay, so hit the like button, don't forget. Um, subscribe, what else? Ring the bell, <laughs> whatever all this means, okay. All right, appreciate y'all's patience and being here. And we will see you. Oh, the fabrics, just so I should tell you, the fabrics will be up through Typically, we leave them up through Friday night. That's the same thing. Can you show the sheer jacket lapel? Sure. I'm just going to throw that away. It's the shawl collar. I didn't change that lapel at all. There. I didn't change it at all. Just the dart. I sewed on the right side so that when the wrong side folds back, it covers the dart. So when you're doing this, you want to use a shear that you like both sides, obviously. Both sides have to be, uh, you, you have to be willing to see both sides on that shear. Because you can see, you see it when I roll up the sleeve. You see it when it folds back. You have to like both sides. Otherwise, you have to use a facing. You don't want to use a facing. It kind of destroys the simplicity to me. I think it's so nice, just the simplicity of the whole thing. Okay. Okay, anything else that we need to do before we say adios? When would you use a four thread serge thread? Well, I used a four thread to sew it. Like this back seam and the side seams, those are four threads. But I don't know that you can do a rolled hem with four threads. I, I don't know if you can. I, I'm so not a serger expert, but I use a four thread when I'm sewing all the time. Three thread is just for finishing off the edge, but when you're trying to do a rolled hem, I don't know that you can use a four thread. You know, I mean, like I said, I'm sure somebody out there knows more than I do. I'm not the one, I know what I do, but I don't know all the options, okay? All right, you all, thanks for being here. Happy sewing, happy shopping. Don't forget the pattern making class, just think about it. Oh, the Milan trip for 2025 is up, and we already have reg we already have signups. So I do think it's going to sell out. We we dropped the limits because all the vans in Italy are like hold eight people, so there's only a there's a maximum of seven, and so we're excited about that. How did you attach the selvage trim on the blue jacket? Um, so when I cut it, I did a three eighths inch seam allowance. And then you just stitch this right along, like any trim. You just, just stitch this right along the edge there on the front. And then when you put the facing on top, you sew from the front side, because you've already got a stitch line, you just sew on the same line again. So it just keeps it nice and perfect. Looks like I'm a really good sewer, huh? I'm not. <laughs> I sew a lot, but I'm not a really good sewer. 3607 would be great for the 922 pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, it's light, but it would work. If I can, you know, the whole goal in doing it in the sheer, if I can do it in the sheer, you can do it in anything. You can do it in anything. I went all the way from a sheer to a knit to, you know, I went, every fabric out there really works well and it holds, it, you know, the pattern, I believe, because of the darts and because of the two pieces, it's shaped so beautifully. So you can do a lot with it. And the goal is to just help you really see how much you can do with it and just do it and play, okay? That's why I say happy sewing, great fabrics, great patterns, happy sewing. All right, bye for now. Thanks. <laughs>